We are uh, looking forward to uh, you know this year and next. So uh, two fronts. One is geographically, as I mentioned earlier, we've just started doing uh, transactions in Southeast Asia with a, with a base in Singapore. So we're looking at scaling uh, or diversifying geographically uh, with Southeast Asia as the next market, uh, and eventually China, uh, which will be in the medium term. Uh, within India, uh, we're feeling very very good about the kind of opportunities we are seeing. Given that the equity environment again is uh, fairly lukewarm, uh, this is the time that uh, uh, companies can buffer whatever liquidity they have, ensure that uh, they have enough fuel to take them through the next six to eight quarters so that they're not raising money uh, when the market is suboptimal for them. So to that extent, uh, the kind of opportunities we're seeing, the pipeline that we're seeing uh, you know, makes me uh, feel pretty good. Uh, this year we expect to to anywhere between 60 to 70 million dollars of funding, uh, depending on opportunities, could be even higher than that, but let's see. Well, uh, when something's not broken, one shouldn't fix it. So I think what we've got going has been working reasonably well for us. So we're pretty happy with, with our strategy. I think the overall venture debt pie is expanding. Um, that's, that's heartening. As a proportion of venture capital, uh, you know, like in the US, it's 10% of venture capital. Today, we are maybe at 2-3% and there's scope to get it to about 5-6% over the next few years. And that's that's a significant chunk of uh, capital that needs to be invested. So, there is a large opportunity and, uh, you know, we are very happy to be blessed with very strong relationships uh, within the venture capital community. And we take that very seriously and there's a ton of amazing founders uh, you know, out there and we're seeing that the quality of companies and uh, quality of ideas is definitely improving and yeah, overall the ecosystem is maturing so good steps, uh, good sizable steps which have been taken over the last 6-7 years across the ecosystem so we'll keep doing more of the same. The only other angle uh, I think we, you'd see more of us is uh, you know, the pre-series A, where conventionally we don't provide capital to these companies, we want to spend more time, um, educate uh, how these companies can optimize their capital structure and uh, also get more familiar with, with the kind of businesses that are getting seeded and uh, hopefully over a period of time also contribute more to that uh, ecosystem as well. It may not be through capital, but through other forms of support. So the companies we fund, because they are high potential and high growth, are mostly non-profitable. They are very light on assets. They have little to minimal track record because they're very young companies. They also operate in sectors which are not very well understood. So these are not the typical cement or steel companies. Uh, these are not trading companies. These are more new age enterprises which are trying to change the way that we live uh, in, in different ways. So. Our DNA also is to chase innovation. We want to uh, sponsor innovation uh, with the name as well, hence in a win. Uh, and our intention is to take higher risk for these kind of uh, companies where uh, the DNA is more to be innovative, differentiated, and not necessarily recreate what's happening in the uh, you know, brick and mortar world. Uh, the conventional NBFCs typically look for assets, uh, they look for uh, and profitability and track record and promoter guarantees and collateral, uh, we recognize that the best uh, guarantee we can ask from a founder is his or her time and so we don't look for any other guarantees beyond that. As long as a founder is interested in the business, we feel that's the best shot at having uh, you know, the best possible outcome.